Surprise, surprise, everybody. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is um, apparently seriously considering turning on President Trump. Now, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here because, listen, we all know the deal. How many times have Republicans flirted with this and then backed away and then flirted with this and then backed away? Um, so, you know, the default position and the default assumption is he ain't doing Dickie McGee's acts until he proves he's going to do something. Um, but I will say this, the chatter is real. And I think that the rumblings behind the scenes, it's real. So take a look at this. Senator Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, has told associates he believes President Trump committed impeachable offenses and that he is pleased that Democrats are moving to impeach him believing that it will make it easier to purge him from the party, according to people familiar with his thinking. The House is voting Wednesday to formally charge Mr. Trump with inciting violence against the country, the newspaper reported Tuesday, originally reported in the New York Times, by the way. Mr. McConnell, Republican of Kentucky, has indicated he wants to see the specific articles of impeachment that the House is set to approve on Wednesday, which is expected to draw support from as many as a dozen Republicans, potentially including Representative Liz Cheney. By the way, she has since come out in favor of it. Uh, Liz Cheney of Wyoming, the party's number three in the House. But he has made clear in private discussions that he believes now is the moment to move on the weakened lame duck who he blames for Republicans losing the Senate, the newspaper reported. Okay, so... Now, why is it that this time might be different? Let me give you the reasons why McConnell is probably closer than ever to throwing Trump under the bus. There's four reasons, four reasons why he might do it. Number one, the corporate money that the Republican Party just totally relies on, it's now gone. The, the corporations are running away at a thousand miles an hour. There's this giant campaign basically to not fund any of what's called the treason caucus, uh, which is all the Republicans who are, you know, questioning the results of the election, even though there's no real evidence, no real proof, no real reason to question it. You know, the, the right had their day in court. Trump had his day in court. He lost. He lost handily. He lost the popular vote by 7 million. When it comes to the Electoral College, Joe Biden has 306 electoral votes. Again, it's not even close. So, corporations and in all various industries too, might I add, it, Wall Street, military, industrial complex, retailers, you name it, you have corporations that are now committing to not fund any Republicans who flirted with this stuff or, or were partaking in this stuff. So that alone is huge and that makes it categorically different than everything else that has happened to this point. To this point, I mean, corporations... Do not abandon the Republican Party, period. That I, I don't, I'm not sure I've ever seen that happen. Maybe you have the odd one here or there, but to have basically a run on the entire party like this, unprecedented. I've never seen anything like it, okay? So that's the first thing, is that the thing that Mitch McConnell cares most about in this world is doing the bidding of corporations. He is a representative of corporate America through and through. That's what he views as his main job. And now corporations are running away from the party at a thousand miles an hour. So he's panicking and he wants to bring them back. He cares way more about the corporations than he cares about Trump. He knows that, you know, the Republican Party is a paper tiger. You get rid of the corporate funding, it implodes. The second thing is Trump, for the first time ever, released the hounds on people inside the club. You understand what that means? So previously, Trumpism, to a lot of these Republican politicians, it was viewed as like, it was viewed as a thing that affects the other, a thing that affects the outsiders. But you know what? We're insiders. So Trump is never going to release the hounds on us. And what happened was very clearly incredibly scary for everybody who was there. You know, the more stories are coming out, the more you realize there was a lot of brazen violence going on and people feared for their lives. And so you had Trump release the hounds on people who are nominally his allies on Capitol Hill. And Mitch McConnell does not take kindly to the peasants and the riffraff getting, it, you know, where he's king. Causing a ruckus where he's supposed to be the number one guy, the boss, the leader. So before it was all, you know, it was all abstract 
Now, Trumpism is real, and it's angry people who want to do violence to you, and they're in the same place as you. So they feel like they've been stabbed in the back by Trump. The third thing is, Trump is now a proven loser. So before it was tough to go after him, because he had this aura of invincibility that was kind of earned. I mean, coming back in 2016, when everybody wrote his political obituary, except maybe like 5% of political pundits, but everybody was like, this guy's done, he's got no chance, it's over, and then he ended up winning, that really broke everybody's brain, where the, the assumption became, he knows something that we don't. He has some secret sauce that we don't. He's magical in that he always outperforms his polling, and he always does better than people think. So they didn't want to poke that tiger because they think, well, he's the head of our party and he won. And so as long as he's given us W's, who are we to really throw him under the bus? Well, now that aura of invincibility is dead and gone. He lost the election to Joe Biden. The Democrats have the House still. And now the Democrats won the Senate. And so McConnell thinks, oh, my God, why would I entertain this maniac anymore? He's a political liability. He's a liability. So you think, I don't have to listen to this guy. Why would I have to listen to this guy? And then the fourth thing is they don't want to have to worry about 2024. So there's a lot of people in the Republican Party, buddy, buddy with, with Mitch McConnell, you know, big in these elite es Republican establishment circles, people like Ted Cruz, people like Josh Hawley, many others in the House. They want to run for president, you know, and they want to be the future of the party. And... If Trump hangs around, well, then, you know, he can tease a run all the way until 2024. He can run in 2024, which takes away or makes it a lot more difficult for the likes of a Ted Cruz or, or a Hawley or anybody else to become the next president. And honestly, they don't want that. Establishment Republicans don't want that because they hate having to explain away Donald Trump's mean tweets. They hate having to explain away his lack of filter, no decorum, no civility. Um, they hate it. Yes, Trump has given them everything in terms of policy, but he's also a massive pain in the ass and a headache, and I have no doubt that Mitch McConnell secretly hates Trump. So, those are the four reasons why it might actually be different this time. Now, don't get it twisted, though, because it is possible. No, it's not different. And McConnell's trying to thread a needle now. He's in a difficult place because if he throws Trump under the bus, he's screwed. And if he doesn't throw Trump under the bus, he's screwed. Um, one of the reasons why maybe he wouldn't do it is because you need a lot of Republicans in order to impeach Trump. Are you really going to find the numbers that you need in order to impeach Trump? I don't know. 16 Republicans in the Senate? That's difficult, man. That's really difficult. So what I don't understand is... I don't know why nobody's talking about this 14th Amendment, um, Section 3 and Section 5 approach. The, the 14th Amendment approach is really straightforward and would work. And the idea behind that is you basically, with a simple majority in the House and the Senate, you can make it so Trump can never hold elected office again. Why? Because he provided aid and comfort to people who were attempting an insurrection or a rebellion. That's literally exactly what happened. And it's like word for word exactly what's in that 14th Amendment. And, and there's a remedy against it. And all you need, it's a regular legislative political process. All you need is a simple majority in the House and a simple majority in the Senate. They could definitely get that. So I don't know why they wouldn't do that. Because in, in that case, you would have, um, you know, Mitch McConnell gets what he wants, which is no Trump 2024 um, nonsense. And he also would allow his caucus to save face a little bit because they don't want to piss off that 25%, 30% hardcore Trump base. And that's what he's struggling with now. How much can I piss off the base while still getting rid of this massive headache that is Donald Trump? So it, it could be different this time. It really could be. But you never know how it's going to unfold because as a general rule, Republicans usually have each other's back. Elected Republicans usually have each other's back. Um, and Mitch McConnell, for all of his flaws... He's not stupid. So, like, he's trying to find the strategically and tactically correct move to walk that fine line between getting rid of the problem of Donald Trump, um, but also 
continuing to win elections. But that's the other thing is I think the Republicans are a little bit screwed no matter what here because there's going to be a Republican civil war. And I do think it's largely going to be along class lines. It's going to be the Trumpists versus the establishment types. But it's really more along class lines. And you have some Republicans who are now defined by the -the over-the-top, stop-the-steal conspiracy nonsense things. And you have others who just want to get back to the business of giving rich people all the money. So I think there's going to be there's going to be a civil war in the Republican Party no matter what. And Mitch McConnell is trying to figure out how to address this where the party gets the corporate money back and he has the least bad result. But either way, we're all sitting here watching, holding our breath. And um, I guess we'll know very soon exactly what the approach is that they're going to take. But we're in uncharted waters here now, and it's really interesting.